In this video, we're going to take an overview look at runtime permissions in Android Marshmallow. In the next video, we are going to actually do a hands-on example. So hands-on, not in this video, but take a look. The next video I record will be the hands-on example. So runtime permissions in Android Marshmallow. In other words, just-in-time permissions. This is a departure from previous Android versions like Lollipop, where you requested all app permissions at the time of installation. That could get a bit cumbersome as the number of, of permissions could be quite large and you might not know why the app needs all of those permissions. In Marshmallow and Grader, Android now requires you to request permissions at time of need. It's a bit more work for the software developer, but it's a better experience for the user because you're not overwhelmed at time of installation and also you have a better idea of what context these permissions are being used. So. Let's take a look at the sequence of events that we need. First, if we are targeting SDKs that include Lollipop and Earlier and Marshmallow and Grader. So if we have that range, we need to check the platform to provide for backward compatibility. Next, we need to check to see if the user has already granted this permission and confirm that the user has not revoked this permission, which a user can do. If the user has granted and not revoked the permission, we're good to go. If the user has not granted the permission or has revoked it, then we can explain what the permission is. Uh, we have to request the permission and then we want to handle the response. If the user said, yes, I will grant this permission or no, I will not. These steps, by the way, come directly from the link I have below, developer.android.com. We're going to take this and we're going to actually look at it in an example as well. So one thing that we want to look at when we are requesting permission are string arrays. This is one of those things I used to cover in Computer Programming 1 back in 2001, 2002, 2003 in that era. At that time, using primitive arrays and strings or string arrays was more common. Then it kind of went out of favor as we got array lists and generics and things like that. So I stopped covering it. Then all of a sudden permissions happened and this syntax looked kind of foreign to a lot of students. So what is an array? Uh, an array is a collection of strings. In other words, you see string name equals Brandon. That's not an array, that's a single string. But now let's take a look at string canines. You see with string canines, we're saying that we want to store three strings in this one variable canines, and we're going to number them zero, one, and two. Bugsy, checkers, and chaos. Now, what's interesting is take a look at the very last line here. String canines equals Bugsy, uh, sorry, equals uh, curly, double quote, Bugsy, close double quote, comma, checkers, comma, chaos, so on and so forth, close curly, semicolon. This one line here is equivalent to the four lines that precede it, not including the one, not including name up here. But this one line here is kind of a shortcut for these four lines here. So if you're not familiar with that, we're going to see it in uh, a few moments. Okay, so what are we going to do? Check the permission. Has the user already granted the permission? Has the user revoked the permission? Uh, if we don't have permission, we need to request permissions. Explain the permission. This is an optional step, but a good one, where we can tell the user why we want to request the permission. And then request the permission. Uh, that's going to require a permission list, which is the string array we talked about earlier. In other words, we take all of the permissions that we want uh, to request and we put them together in an array. We simply use strings to represent each of the permissions. Now, we're going to ask for these permissions. The user is going to have an opportunity to respond. And then we're going to hear back from the user. Now, when we hear back from the user, it's similar to an analogy I gave in a previous video, which is something I remember from my childhood, the self-addressed stamped envelope. At the end of a lot of uh, like uh, game shows, they'd say, if you want tickets, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to this address in Hollywood, California. And what that means is you would write your address as the send to address here. Uh, you would write the game show's address as the from address here. Then you take that small envelope, you stick it in a bigger envelope, and you mail it off to Hollywood. In Hollywood, they open the big envelope, pull out the small envelope, put the tickets to the show in the small envelope, mail it back to you. So that was the 1970s, 1980s version of what we, uh, what we would call a callback in programming now. And by the way, this image courtesy of WikiHow. So in this case, we request a permission and we attach a request code to it. That's kind of like the from address on our self-addressed stamped envelope. When we open our mailbox, we look at the from address and we realize we have tickets to the price is right. Similarly, when we're hearing back from this request permissions, we look at the request code to remember who is it that requested these permissions. 
It's very likely in one activity you could have multiple permissions requests, but they're all going to come back to the same method, which is called on request permissions result. Finally, we handle the response. Did the user say yes? Did the user say no? Uh, if the user said yes, let's go ahead and enable this functionality. If the user said no, we might want to tell them what has become unavailable because of them choosing no. And more importantly, we might want to disable any buttons that are now unavailable. If you're asking for camera permission and the user says no, you might want to, do, you might want to disable that camera button. So that is an overview of permissions in the next video. We're going to take a hands-on look. I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.